Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Today, I'm talking about attachment styles and how they affect your relationships. Attachment refers to the bond that you form with people in close relationships, such as your parents, children, close friends, or romantic partners. Attachment theory was first developed by psychologists John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth, but it has since been expanded upon by other researchers. And there's a few different models with different terms, but I'm going to focus on the original three types of attachment styles, secure, insecure, anxious, and insecure, avoidant. The two insecure styles can be summed up as anxiety about being abandoned or avoiding intimacy and closeness. What does this look like as an adult? If you have a secure attachment style, you feel comfortable letting people get to know you and you feel content that you can rely on the person to be there when you need them. If you have an anxious attachment style, you tend to be clingy in relationships and you're always on alert for the smallest sign of rejection. You don't trust very easily and it can be a roller coaster of emotions for you. You can end up with a lot of broken relationships because you drive people away with the suspicions. Also, your fear of rejection can lead you to end a relationship so that you can avoid being rejected or abandoned by the other person. So you initiate the breakup. If you have an avoidant attachment style, you can appear aloof and distant in relationships. Essentially, you're not very reactive to things. If you feel threatened in a relationship, you may ignore the threat and rely on your own personal resources to get you through the crisis. It's like complete psychological independence. Your partner or friend can feel like, you don't need me. That's how it can look. Here's how these patterns develop. Attachment starts very early on between infant and caregiver and continues through the early years of childhood. During this period of development, you look to your caregiver for reassurance and safety. The things that build attachment are physical closeness, touch, reassuring facial expressions, and providing a base of safety. And you can see this in the infant stage when the baby coos and the caregiver responds with smiles and kisses. You can see this in the toddler stage when the baby explores a new environment by taking a few steps away from the parent and then comes back and grabs a leg to hold on to. Then the baby wanders a little further and looks back to make sure everything's okay at home base. The baby may even bring you a stick that they picked up from the floor. And this is all part of the process of gaining reassurance that the parent is still there at home base. In this back and forth behavior of exploring the world and coming back to safety is what establishes this bond. The child sees the caregiver as a safe base from which to explore the world and a safe haven to return to when feeling distressed. As you get older, your important attachment figures transition from parents to close friends and romantic partners. There are some parenting styles that can interfere with this process and create insecure attachments. Having a parent who is unresponsive and inattentive can cause you to be overly self-reliant, and this can result in the insecure avoidance style. And this kind of unresponsiveness is more than being too busy cleaning the house to talk or not wanting to play the same game for the eighth time. We're talking more at the level of neglect or being absent. And sometimes being a depressed parent can make you emotionally absent to the degree that it has this trickle-down effect of causing your child to have attachment problems. The insecure, anxious type can result from having parents who were harsh and critical. Unlike the insecure avoidant who may have felt invisible and ignored, the insecure, anxious person got too much negative attention that affected their view of themselves and others. Of course, early childhood trauma can create insecure attachments, but faulty parenting or trauma doesn't always have to be the cause. Sometimes people are hardwired to be more anxious or avoidant in the way that they relate to others. For example, in some of the attachment studies, the children who were identified as being insecure avoidant would explore their environment and seem to forget that the parent was there. They would start playing with toys, and if the parent left the room, they were unfazed. The children who were insecure anxious would cry when the parents left the room, 
and couldn't be consoled when the parent returned. And then the securely attached children would cry when the parents left the room, but when the parent returned, they could be comforted and then return to exploring. And these children all had similar upbringings and their, their behavior couldn't be linked to faulty parenting. You may notice that what I'm describing sounds like the personality disorders, and there is some overlap. The personality disorders cause problems in relationships, and some of the problems center around bonding and intimacy. The insecure, anxious style can be seen in histrionic, avoidant, borderline, and dependent personalities. The insecure, avoidant style can be seen in schizoid, narcissistic, antisocial, and paranoid personalities. But having an insecure attachment style doesn't automatically mean you have a personality disorder. If you have one of these insecure attachment styles, all is not lost. Here are four things that you can do to improve your attachments. Number one is recognize your attachment style, and here's how you can do that. Take a look back at your significant relationships. A failed relationship doesn't mean that it was because you have an insecure attachment. All romantic relationships fail until they don't and you become forever connected. Also, when looking back over your relationships, it's important to include close friendships as well. How secure did you feel in these relationships? How close did you feel to the person? How does not having contact with the person make you feel? It's natural to miss them, but do you become unglued? Or do you start doubting yourself or their loyalty if you haven't seen them in a while? Or do you feel like you don't really need to see them or talk to them? And remember, this is for people you consider important to you. The second thing that you can do is practice self-compassion. Researchers have shown that people with an adequate amount of self-compassion are more likely to compromise in relationships and balance their own needs against the needs of someone else's. In both the anxious and avoidant attachment styles, you over-prioritize your needs. With the clingy, anxious style, your needs drive you to constantly appraise whether your needs are being met by the other person. With the aloof, avoidant style, you're not very interested in how another person can meet your needs. So changing the way that you bond with other people starts with changing how you feel about yourself. Dr. Kristen Neff has done a lot of work in this area of self-compassion. She has several free resources on her website, selfcompassion.org, that lets you measure your level of self-compassion. She also has some self-compassion exercises that you can do. But just to give you an idea of how self-compassion is measured, here are a few of the items on the assessment scale. When I fail at something important to me, I become consumed by feelings of inadequacy. I try to be understanding and patient toward those aspects of my personality that I don't like. When I'm feeling down, I tend to feel like most other people are probably happier than I am. When I fail at something that's important to me, I tend to feel alone in my failure. You can see the theme here. How hard are you on yourself when you fail at something, get upset about something, or something doesn't go your way? It stands to reason that if you're harsh and critical of yourself and your faults, it would be hard to feel that you deserve closeness. Why would someone wanna be close to you? Number three is to journal or reflect on your secure relationships. And this is called security priming. And there's various ways to do it. And it's something that's still being studied on exactly what to do. But in general, it involves activating your thoughts around feeling secure and keeping that secure feeling top of mind. One exercise is to think of someone with whom you felt secure and write about that person for five to 10 minutes. Another exercise is to write a sentence using each of the following four security words in their own sentence. Love, embrace, respect, and snuggle. And there's other words you can use as well kind of all in the same theme of feeling secure and about love and connectedness. So you write a sentence that includes the words and try to make it personal with a, either a personal experience or it could be a sentence that talks about how you feel. You can make these exercises part of a daily journaling practice. The last thing you can do is see a therapist for professional help with making this transition 
from insecure to secure. Attachment-based compassion therapy is a relatively new therapy that specifically addresses this issue. But other types of therapy like psychodynamic, cognitive behavior, dialectical behavior, and mentalization therapy also help. If you see a therapist, you may want to ask the therapist if they can help you form secure attachments. Watch my personality disorder playlist for more on the personalities. In this video, I talk about a different way to conceptualize the personality disorders. Thanks for watching. See you next time.